Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Zess and I make Rampai minigame tutorials. Thanks to all my patrons who keep the channel alive so I can keep making new tutorials. I appreciate it a lot and it's very helpful, so thank you. If you're not already a patron, I have all the tutorial scripts available over there as well as other interesting scripts not available as tutorials on my channel. In this tutorial, we'll have a look at how to work with Rampai's speech bubble system for character dialogues. This is a relatively new feature that was introduced in version 8.1 and 7.6 and I do feel the documentation so far as I'm making this video is a little lacking in certain areas. So I hope it will be informative and helpful for those of you who are looking to use it. So with the speech bubble system, you can have speech bubbles with character dialogues instead of the classic ATV or NVL styles. This is fairly simple to set up and use and in this tutorial we'll go through how to do that and what the settings are that you can tweak to get different results. To follow along with the tutorial, make sure you have a fresh Rampai project in the size 1920 x 1080 pixels using the latest version of the Rampai engine. You can also download the image assets used in the tutorial from the description box below. You should know some of the basics of Rampai to follow this tutorial, like how to work with images and what screens and labels are, otherwise it will be difficult to follow along what's happening overall. Each part of the tutorial will have a separate script available to download for patrons in the TA Supporter Ohio. There will also be a bonus tutorial and script available in the same day where I show you how to apply different effects or transforms to bubbles, which I won't go over in this tutorial. With that said, let's get started. As always, make sure you have added the images into the images folder of your project so you can use them in the code. To set up the game to use speech bubbles with dialogue, we'll first need to have some character objects that will use them. In this case, I have set up two characters named Eileen and Mila, and to use speech bubbles for these, we'll use the kind argument and then specify we want the bubble type instead of ADV or NVL. For this to work properly, we also need to specify images to be linked to these characters with the image argument, otherwise we'll get errors when we run the game. In this case, we have two images in the images folder called Eileen and Mila that Rampai can use for these characters. Now that we have done that, let's set up a simple label using these characters as well as the background image. For that, I have a label called Introduction where I've added the background with the scene statement and then show the Eileen and Mila images. You won't be able to use side images with the speech bubbles, as the default bubble screen doesn't support it, so instead we use the show statement to show our characters. To position them where we want, I have also set up two simple transforms called place left and place right using the pulse and anchor properties. Then we have five lines of dialogue for this example between Mila and Eileen, and for the bottom two lines I have also styled some of the text using the color text tag. Let's now jump to this label from the start label and then run the game to see what this looks like. So here we can now see our two characters and the first speech bubble for the first line of dialogue spoken by Eileen. We can see that these speech bubbles are placed in the top right corner per default with this size. This speech bubble image is located in the GUI folder of your project and is called bubble.png. So this is the file Rempa uses per default, but we'll also have a look at ways you can change the image to something different later on. If we progress the game now by clicking, we can see that the rest of the speech bubbles show up in the same location for each line of dialogue, but this is probably not what you want as it will look better if they are placed next to the character speaking instead. For that, Rampai has a handy built-in tool called the Bubble Editor, which you can enable by pressing Shift and B on the keyboard. At the top here, we can now see the editor, which has two options to choose from. The area button is for placing and sizing the currently visible bubble on the screen. The properties button is for choosing where the tail of the bubble should be placed. To enable the area option, you simply click on it, which will cause a red rectangle to follow your mouse according to a predefined grid size. You can then click and drag with the mouse where you want the bubble to be placed. You can think of it as you're selecting grid cells in an invisible grid where the bubble should go. When you're done dragging, the bubble will now have this new placement and size, and the option is now turned off again. If you're unhappy with the result, you simply click the option again and repeat until you get something you like. And if you find that you change your mind after clicking this option, you can always cancel by pressing escape on the keyboard. To change the position of the tail, you click the properties button, which will flip the bubble on the x-axis to get the tail on the other side. If you click again, it will change the bubble type to a different one called a thought bubble. This is also an image in the GUI folder, which simply lacks the tail. 
This is good for when you have a character thinking about something rather than speaking. If you click again, you will get the tail on the top left side and then on the top right side, and then it will repeat. Once you're done with the bubble size and placement, this is what the bubble will look like for any following dialogue by the same character, unless you change them as well. So now if we click to progress the game, we get Mila's first dialogue, which hasn't been placed yet, so it uses the default location. Again, we can move and size this to what we want. Once we're done, we click again, and this time it's Aline speaking again, and we can see that her dialogue bubble is in the same location we placed it the last time. If we don't like the position of this particular dialogue, we change it like usual. Then this will be the position and size of the following dialogues from her, unless we change them as well. This is the process you want to go through for all your dialogues until you have something you like. Once you feel you're done placing bubbles, you can hide the editor by pressing Shift and B again or by clicking on the hide button. After you quit the game, you will notice that there's a new file generated for you in the project files called bubble.json. This is a JSON file containing the information about each bubble that have been placed. Each entry in this file contains a unique identifier that identifies the line of dialogue that the bubble belongs to, as well as its position and where the tail is located. If you want to, you can manually edit the location, size and where the tail is located for each bubble in the file by editing the area and properties values. So if you want the first bubble to be placed differently, you can change the X and Y values for the area's key values. The values are in the same order as the area property used by displayables, so if you look at the documentation for the area property, we can see that it says the order is x, y, width and height. Then to change the location of the tail, you would change the properties value to the corner you want it in instead. If it's not specified, then run by simply using the default location, which is in the bottom right corner. To add it, you would simply add a comma after the square bracket, then write properties, colon, and then the corner you want the tail in instead. And that's about as much that we can change with this file. You don't want to touch the identify key, which is the first thing in each entry. If you change it, Rampa will no longer be able to find the dialogue this bubble is connected to. You can of course also change the placement, size and tails of each bubble with the bubble editor in the game. Any bubbles you change location and size of will then be automatically updated in the file, and any ones you don't change will stay the same as before. And since I want the first bubble to have its tail in the bottom right corner, I'm just going to go ahead and remove this line that I just added, as I just wanted to show you how to do that. An important thing to note is that if you use the scene statement in your game, any new dialogues after it will be using the default placement of the bubble, instead of whatever the last placement was for a specific character. As an example, to illustrate this, we'll add the scene statement after the dialogues we have in our introduction label, then show our characters again, and then add a new line of dialogue for Aline. If we now run the game again and let it progress until Aline's new dialogue, we can see it's placed in a default location instead of what it was before. So this one will also need to be placed in a new location. We can also change other things to do with the bubble system by using configuration variables, which we'll have a look at next.